दिलचस्पी रखते हैं खासकर नौजवान और बूढ़े भी यही नहीं है कि सिर्फ भगत सिंह को भारत में जाना जाता है भारत के बाहर भी भगत सिंह को पढ़ा जाता है समझा जाता है तो हमारे बीच में क्रिस मुफात हैं वो क्वीन मैरी यूनिवर्सिटी लंदन में पढ़ाते हैं तो आज भगत सिंह पर वही बोलेंगे कि भगत सिंह को समझना आज के दौर में कितना ज़रूरी है तो आप लोगों से गुजारिश है कि प्लीज़ आप लोग जो अंदर आके बैठ सकते हैं अंदर आ जाइए चप्पल जूते उतार कर बाकी लोग यहाँ साइड में बैठ सकते हैं ओके क्रिस ओके हेलो बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आसफ भाई फॉर द इन्विटेशन के लिए मुझे शहीन बाग देख कर और कॉमराज से मिलकर बहुत खुशी हुई बड़ी खुशी हुई मैं सिर्फ थोड़ी सी हिंदी बोल सकता हूँ तो इसलिए मैं अंग्रेज़ी में बोलूँगा लेकिन अगर आप लोग कुछ सवाल हैं तो हिंदी में पूछिए उसके बाद ठीक है तो सबसे पहले मुझे बात करना चाहिए कि मैं कनाडा से हूँ हाँ कनाडा से हूँ और आजकल कनाडा की सरकार इज इन्वेडिंग इंडिजिनस लैंड एंड ब्लॉकिंग एंड ट्राइंग टू पुश इंडिजिनस पीपल ऑफ देर लैंड टू बिल्ड ऑयल पाइपलाइंस एंड वेमेन एंड मैन इन इंडिजिनस कम्यूनिटीज पर्टिकुलरली दी वत्सुअन in a, in what in canada is known as british columbia are standing up and resisting against canada ki sarkar and we want to i would like to send a message of solidarity from shaheen bag to them uh, so just starting with that if if um it's okay yes we will take them thank you thank you so me to maine ye kitab likha भगत सिंह के बैरी में जिसका नाम इंडियज रेवोल्यूशनरी इनहेरिटेंस है ठीक है और दिस बुक इज अबाउट दिस बुक इज अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एंटी कलोनियल हिस्ट्रीज टूडे राइट द आइडिया दैट वी आर एबल टू सी एंटी कलोनियल फिगर्स एंड एंटी कलोनियल क्रिटिक्स ऑल अराउंड अस एंड हर जगह हम देख सकते हैं ठीक है खास तौर पर शहीन बाग में राइट यू हैव भगत सिंह यू हैव गांधी यू हैव सुबह बोस संजय बोस यू हैव अम्बेडकर ऑल ऑफ दीज फिगर्स फ्राम एंटी कलोनियल स्ट्रगल्स हु आर हीर विथ अस टूडे राइट हमारे साथ हैं एंड द सेंट्रल आर्ग्यूमेंट इन दिस बुक इज दैट फिगर्स लाइक भगत सिंह लाइक अम्बेडकर like ram prasad bismil um are not figures from another time they're actually uh important they have power today right they are still important to politics in india today i want to say a little bit about this with regard to bhagat singh as this very famous person very um bahut mashhoor uh log who is still in dialogue with protest politics in india today so i'll say three things about this first i'll say what is it about bhagat singh that is so important why kyon bhagat singh right and second i'll say something about how bhagat singh appears today in india why he is uh a why people kind of are drawn to him today at least as i see it and third or last what is bhagat singh's demand of us what does bhagat singh want from us today okay so first why is bhagat singh uh, an important figure we all know he was executed in uh, lahore lahore central jail 23rd march 1931 for conspiracy to wage war against the king emperor right conspiracy to wage war against the british empire and he celebrated for his courage facing death his his willingness to live up to the charges that were made against him and to commit his life to the idea to his cause so he is remembered today for this brave sacrifice as shaheed azam as amar shaheed bhagat singh right 
And because he was only 23 years old, he's also this youth icon, a, a young, an icon for youth and, and to show what you, young people can do. And here it's been amazing seeing how many young people are involved in raising slogans, um, calling, calling for Inkalab. So Bhagat Singh was born in 1907 in outside Mialpur, which is now Faisalabad, uh, in, in present-day Pakistan. And he came to Lahore as a student. So he was studying in Lahore as a young man. During the non-cooperation movement, he joined the National College uh, in Lahore, which was opened by Lala Lajpat Rai, a very important national figure. And there he learned about politics, he learned how to be a political worker, he learned how to organize. And with his comrades in the National College, he founded the Naujaran Bharat Sabha, right? The Naujaran Bharat Sabha was an important youth movement that was separate from the mainstream Congress movement and interested in a sort of uh, militant spirit and a militant sort of organization against British rule. And through the National College, he met people like Sachin, uh, Sachin Janath Sanyal, these older revolutionaries who had organized with Ram Prasad Bismil, with Ashfaqullah Khan, in the Hindustan Republican Association. And the Hindustan Republican Association uh, had been charged with the Kokori train robbery, the conspiracy, and many of them had been executed, including Bismil and Khan, who have also been commemorated here. And Ram Prasad Bismil, as all of you knew, know, wrote this poem, Sarfaroshi Ki Tamanna, um, which has been, I've been hearing even tonight, Sarfaroshi Ki Tamanna, Ab Hamare Dil Mehe. And um, Bhagat Singh, and after they were executed, Bismil and Khan and other figures, the young comrades were left to pick up the pieces to create their own uh, organization, which was the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association. Well, the EA organization was founded in the wake of uh, the 1917 revolution in Russia. They were inspired by what was happening in Russia. It was founded in the wake of Gandhi's non-cooperation campaign and a sense of mass movements amongst people. And shortly after they were founded, most of you will know this, that there was a protest in Lahore against the Simon Commission in which Lala Lajpat Rai was beaten by police and weeks later he, he, was, he, he died, he succumbed to his in injuries. And in protest of his death, Lajpat Rai's death, the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association uh, assassinated a police officer in Lahore who was responsible for, or was part of the, the crowd that, that uh, attacked the protest. So this was the first action that Bhagat Singh was involved in. After that, he went into hiding, and the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association, next, uh, their next action a few months later was in the Legislative Assembly in Delhi, today's Lok Sabha, where they threw a bomb, a smoke bomb, that did not kill anyone from the, the viewing gallery to raise a protest. Exactly at the same time that the government was discussing the Public Safety Act, which is still with us today, and the Trade Unions Disputes Bill. And they threw the bomb, they threw leaf leaflets into the crowd, they shouted Inkalab Zindabad, long live revolution, and handed themselves over to authorities. They surrendered themselves to police because they wanted to raise their protest as loudly as possible and they wanted to do this on the stage provided by the government. So during this court case, there was a connection made to Lahore, to the Lahore assassination. And so a bigger Lahore conspiracy case took place in which Bhagat Singh and his wider group of comrades were uh, sentenced for this, uh, this charge of sedition, this charge of conspiracy to wage war against the empire. Out of this case, Bhagat Singh and two comrades, Sukhdev Tapar, uh, Shivaram Rajguru, were both, where all three of them were hanged on 23rd March 1931. So what can we learn from Bhagat Singh's life? What can we learn from this history? 
what is his meaning today? Ashkal, Hamare liye Bhagat Singh ka matlab kya? So first, I would say three things. First thing is that Bhagat Singh and his comrades show us tremendous faith in the possibility that a new world uh, of a new world, that a new world is possible, right? Ignaya dunya mumkin hai, right? This is the first lesson. They believe that there could be radical change in society, that it, the injustices and inequalities that they were living with were not permanent, that if they fought, if they stood up for what was right, then things would change, right? The second thing is that they recognize the power of the Indian people, the power of the people of India to bring this new world about. This was crucial, they believed every Indian was possible of bringing this new world apart. Sab log is naya dunya, kam kar sakte hain, right? They were able to work for this new world. This was a, an axiom, this was the truth that they wanted people to realize. And the third thing that I think is important is that they saw the law as not the only representative of justice, right? Justice was not bound by law. Justice could be something that the law did not speak for, that there were unjust laws and those needed to be fought against, right? So I'll come back to these three lessons uh, a bit later, but this is the kind of first thing I wanted to say about why Bhagat Singh is such a compelling figure today. So Bhagat Singh is known for this slogan, In Kalab Zindabad, long live revolution, a perpetual revolution. This idea that, as he put it in 1929, old order should change always and ever so that one good order cannot corrupt the world, right? So this wasn't just about independence. This wasn't just about freedom from the British. It was about a radical transformation of a society and a way to kind of constantly question injustice, constantly question um, uh, abuses of power. And so I think Bhagat Singh helps us think about 1947 as an important date, but not the simple end of one history and the start of another. That certain things that anti-colonial figures like we see here were fighting against, those fights are not finished, right? Those fights continue in different ways. This is what Bhagat Singh uh, represents in some ways, this unfinished business of anti-colonial revolution. And there's an old slogan which some of you will know um, that is associated with left movements in India, this idea that ye azadi juti hai, right? Ye azadi juti hai. And this is what Bhagat Singh is also connected with. This idea that the caste and class and gender inequalities that existed in colonial India still exist today in different forms, have taken new forms. And one way in which Bhagat Singh's disruptive potential, his power today, has been addressed is to... Is it okay? Is it okay? okay. Test, test. Oh, I was saying that Bhagat Singh exists today as this powerful figure who reminds us there is still a fight to be had. There is a still a struggle to continue. And so one way to think about how Bhagat Singh has been contained or transformed into this sort of uh, non confrontational figure who is simply a brave patriot, who is simply this figure from the past who's no longer important today, who we can build statues to, or we can uh, see as this sort of brave patriot. I think this is a narrative that uh, has to be challenged in some way, and people have been challenged this for, for a long time by pointing to his writings, by pointing to the work he did um, as a student, writing manifestos, writing uh, uh, articles about revolution and about the type of society he wanted to see. Is it okay? Or is it... Is that better? No. <laughs> is it okay? 
Okay, so what I wanted to say was that Bhagat Singh is this disruptive figure who has been appropriated in different ways by the state, by those in power. They build statues, they uh, put his banner in parliament, the same building that he threw a bomb into. They make him uh, positioned simply with this kind of muscular figure, waving the national flag, supporting the army, supporting all of these state powers, without recognizing his revolutionary call. They inc Bhagat Singh as Inkalabi, right? And so, one of the ways we can challenge this is by looking at his writings, by coming and studying and reading. Many books on Bhagat Singh are here available. And th finding out what type of society he was fighting for, what type of ideas inspired him, and accept him as a figure who is political, a political figure rather than simply a sentimental nationalist figure, right? So my work is interested in how history, this book is about why history becomes a battleground in India today and why certain ideas of history have to be fought for, have to be kind of seized upon uh, and, and held forward. And I think this is happening at Shaheen Bagh, this idea of these figures as demanding something from us, as asking for us to join a fight uh, today is, is really evident. So, if we accept that Bhagat Singh wants us to join the fight, he wants us to struggle, he wants Inkalab to come, then what, what sort of thing does he want? And I wanted to start by maybe reading a short section from the book about his execution. So, 19, 1931, 23rd of March, let me find it. <laughs> Shouts emerged from jail, reported the Lahore Tribune following the events of 23rd March 1931. Should I wait for a bit? Should I wait? Hello, um, Shouts emerged from the jail, reported the Lahore Tribune following the events of 23rd March 1931. Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, and Sukhdev executed. The government's attempt to avoid a public spectacle around this controversial hanging was subverted by a loud call heard from inside the prison. One final shout of defiance from the gallows, Inkalab Zindabad. The prison walls reverberated with the slogan. The musician and scholar, Madan Gopal Singh recalls a story passed down by his father describing the family's village in Itra outside Lahore on the evening of the hanging. Like most of the district, the village was agog with excitement on 23rd March, charged with rumors that an execution was coming. After the fall of darkness, the tension was broken by distant echoing shouts of Inkalab Zindabad. Groups of villagers gathered to return the call from the rooftops into the night. Inkalab Zindabad, Inkalab Zindabad. And Madan Gopal Singh imagines the scene. He says, their sound is picked up by the inmates of the jail and reciprocated. The atmosphere becomes fully charged. Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs rise as one primal sound and the night is torn asunder. This impassioned expression of solidarity between the prison mates in Lahore Central Jail and the villagers in Itra continues late into the night. Not a lamp is lit anywhere, whereas the distant jail seems to burn like an island of light. And in this telling, the resolve of Bhagat Singh and his comrades in the face of death is contagious, it's inspiring. Their final shouts cascade, they spark a rising chorus. This death is not to be greeted with silence, it demands a response, it demands a fight. Okay. So this, I think, shows that Bhagat Singh is not some irrelevant figure from the past, from another time, but someone who continues to be important today as a sense of potential unfulfilled, of struggles unfinished.
And this is, is where I think the lesson of Shaheen Bagh uh, shows us how the power of this history. Um, all of these posters we see, the slogans being chanted, in Kalab Zindabad, Hala Bol. And we can return then to the lessons that I said about Bhagat Singh earlier. Three lessons. One, you remember the power of the Indian people to change the world, right? We are, the, this naya dunya mumkin hai if all Indian people work for it. And I think this is here, this is the crowd coming out to, to fight for that world. The second is this distinction of between justice and the law and the idea that laws can be unjust and we know that this is the heart of this protest the CAA, NRC, these are all... Yeah. I'm just in the middle of speaking okay, so... Okay. Um, I know that, but huh. I hope that you are aware that there are like immigration laws huh. well I'm not, well I'm part of the protest myself Sure. but I'm just giving you like a friendly advice I'm speaking about my book which is about Bhagat yeah, Singh no, no, no. You do, I mean, speaking in a lecture no, no, I understand he's, that. he's concerned so, about see, me I'm being... just concerned in the sense that you know I'm from Kerala so they have, they have like already like uh, they have like extradited two tourists who are part of protest so if tomorrow his pictures are on social media and then he goes you know people come to know of that let's finish with the, the last point so we know that the power of of the people is here in Shaheen Bagh we know that we can call for justice that uh, and challenge unjust laws but the last thing about the faith in the new world right is faith in the possibility of a new world I think is difficult sometimes to to grasp on not least because of this global rise of uh, of the far right of kind of new strong leaders who are challenging um, progressive movements but also because we are faced with ecological crisis and climate crisis um, which it makes the future very difficult to, to grasp in different ways but I think again there are some answers in Shaheen Bagh this kind of care and inclusivity and solidarity that we see offers some uh, some possibilities for the future some visions of of the future and so I think just to finish again on that slogan of Inkalab Zindabad that we know this is one fight we know this is one issue that people are gathered here to fight but there are also many more fights and in Kalab Zindabad this call encourages us to continue fighting to continue challenging those who seek to remove our liberties to pers to perpetuate inequalities and so we continue to raise this slogan in Kalab Zindabad old order must change always and ever thank you very much and I'd be happy to take some questions Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, we are very sorry for technical problems. No problem, sir. Uh, <laughs> so, अभी आप लोगों में से किसी का कोई सवाल है, माफी चाहेंगे कि ज़्यादातर इंग्लिश में बोले, तो अगर फिर भी आप लोग बात करना चाहते हैं, भगत सिंह के बारे में कुछ सवाल करना चाहते हैं, तो पूछ सकते हैं। क्रिस उतना हिंदी समझ सकते हैं कि वो सवाल समझ जाए आपका, वो जवाब इंग्लिश में देंगे no, I have a question. You, you, you look here at the BJP. The, the government is claiming that Gandhi did nothing while the uh, British was giving the punishment to the Bhagat Singh. Huh. What is your view on this? Huh. G. So the question was, what is the what the idea is that Gandhi did nothing to save Bhagat Singh? So I don't I I'm not going to I don't know the historical facts about that. But one thing I would say is that one of the encouraging things about Shaheen Bagh is to see how Gandhi and Bhagat Singh are brought together in different ways, right? And Bhagat Singh was also Bhagat Singh did not criticize Gandhi in. Uh, a way that he thought he was um, against him in any way. He actually, the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association thanked Gandhi for bringing a mass awakening to India. They just felt that there were other means that they could use, that nonviolence was only one p potential path. But they are part of the same conversation and they, are, they should be seen together. It's open. Just. It's just because of this. 
We talked about appropriation. Huh. I think where the all the socialist parties in India failed was they did not make use of Bhagat Singh's okay. socialist, you know, ideals as much as the right wing parties have been made use of his nationalist ideals. Sure. Now we are we are unable to reclaim Bhagat Singh back. Hmm. As a socialist, you know, people hmm. we are unable to reclaim him back. What do you think we should do hmm. to reclaim Bhagat Singh back as a socialist leader hmm. rather than him being as a far right nationalist, sure. you know, icon which uh, the BJP or the current uh. government party have reclaimed? Him back? So the question was. The rights in India have been more successful at positioning Bhagat Singh as a muscular patriot than the left have been in showing him as a socialist. So, so this was the question. And what can we do about that? I mean, one thing to say is that what the book argues that it's 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 difficult to say that you can Bhagat Singh means a lot of things to different people, right? So it's not about a right or wrong it's not that you can have it's not like you'll be able to completely take him back from the right wing. But there are ample ways in which he can be portrayed as a as an inkalabi, as a socialist. And I think that his writings demonstrate that. We had a conversation with some comrades recently that talked about him as an intellectual and looking at his thought and how he thought about society. And there's no denying in that, that he was inspired by socialism, that he was inspired by 1917, that he was inspired by Irish freedom fighters, that he was inspired by what was happening by trade unionists in England and, and the US, that he was inspired by uh, all sorts of different progressive movements. And so I think it's just that you have to continue shouting that loud and using that and waving the banners and not letting him go because it is as I say history is a is a field of struggle in India as elsewhere in Canada too in in England in all of these places but here it is it is that much more important to kind of grasp onto those possibilities Okay. A lot of climate uh, activism that I saw in India. With, this is 2011-12, whereas now I think it's a much more of a conversation. So I would be interested to know what you think or what other people who are involved in that think. Obviously, environmental change was not something that Bhagat Singh was writing about or thinking about. But the idea of an internationalism and in a, a solutions that are not bound to single states is something that is informative for climate activism, for environmental activism, that we need to think internationally, we need to think, and Bhagat Singh shows us how to do that. He shows us how to take inspiration from other places. This is why I started by thinking about somewhere as distant as Canada and the resistance movements going on there, which are about indigenous uh, histories of resistance being used to fight uh, big corporations looking for oil and taking over land and forests. So, and there are Adivasi struggles here that are parallel to that. There's a global uh, community that can be connected. That makes sense. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>